All right, in this video, I am going to go over multi timbral synths and how you can set them up in Cubase and why you should care about them. So what is a multi timbral synth anyways? Well, a multi timbral synth goes back way back to the beginning stages of, of MIDI after the revolution in the early 80s. A multi timbral synth was a device that was able to have more than one sound or patch playing at the same time. So a multi timbral synth would be great with a hardware synthesizer because you could have a piano on channel one, you could have a trumpet on channel two, you could have some strings on channel three. So that was a multi timbral synth. When I first got into this stuff, this Alesis keyboard behind me here, the multi timbral device, I could have 16 different sounds on it at the same time, I hooked it up to my computer and MIDI information all flowed out to that device. So that's what a multi timbral synth is in hardware. Why do we care about it with software? You may have some virtual instruments that are multi timbral already, but you just didn't know it. So contact and a whole bunch of other synthesizers are multi timbral in the sense that you can have more than one patch loaded on those virtual instruments at the same time. Why would you want to do that on your setup? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One would be maybe to save CPU or RAM if you're working on an older computer and you're kind of running out of that kind of stuff. Every time you load up an instance of a virtual instrument, you're, you're stealing a little bit of RAM and a little bit of processor overhead. So if you can load up just one instance of contact and a bunch of instruments, you may start solving some of your CPU or RAM issues if you're working on a, on a quite old machine. And then the other reason is you might be working with a much more scaled down version of the software. So you might have one of the, the lower versions of Cubase where you have a limitation on how many instruments you can actually have loaded in your project. So a way around that is to load up your virtual instrument in one slot and then you load up a bunch of MIDI tracks and you send those MIDI tracks to that virtual instrument. So I'm going to show you how this is done here in contact and then I'll show you in a couple other virtual instruments just so you can see what the difference with those. I'm just going to load analog dreams into contact. So normally you load one patch in here and then again you go make a new instrument track. Well what we're going to do now is we're going to make one instrument track which is going to be kind of like the master for our project for a whole bunch of contact instruments. So we'll call this contact master. So I'm going to load in an analog dreams I'm going to load in a hybrid keys and then I'll also load in something from the factory library. I love the upright bass in here. So now I've got three different instruments loaded into one instance of contact. And the next thing you're going to have to do is make MIDI tracks. And it's something that newer users of Cubase probably haven't touched, but this is the way we used to set things up all the time back in the olden days before instrument tracks. So what we need to do here is make a bunch of MIDI tracks. So I'm going to right click and go add MIDI track or you make a key command for it. And if I were to do this, let's say let's add six tracks. You'll see that I've now got six different MIDI tracks and they start at channel two because this one was on channel one, Cubase is going to automatically start numbering them two, three, four, five, etc. even though this is my first MIDI track, which is kind of annoying. Well, it's, it's just the default behavior. So in order to get past that, a way to quickly number them all in the right order would be to add a MIDI track, just add one, and it's going to be set to channel two. So let's set that to channel one. And that's what this little number here, by the way, is you won't have paid much attention to this if you are only working with instrument tracks, but now it really matters. We are going to make a bunch more MIDI tracks now and let's add maybe five more. And if we look at them now, we can see this one's going to channel one, this one's channel two, this one's channel three and so on and so forth. And we can also see that a MIDI track is receiving information from whatever keyboard I have hooked up. And then this output now is really important because it's something we don't really see the same way on an instrument track. On an instrument track, it goes out to a virtual instrument. In this case, we are taking that information and we're specifically sending it to that instrument track that we've already created. So this instrument track up top, Contact Master, we can see that this MIDI track is now going out to Contact Master MIDI in. And all you have to do is choose the right channel if you didn't care about outputs or anything like that, you're pretty much done. You could stop right there, but I'm going to show you a way that we can actually have individual outputs, audio outputs for each one of those tracks. This is where things get a little bit convoluted. So our first MIDI track here is Analog Dreams. So we'll call this Analog Dreams. So our next one is Hybrid Keys. So we'll call this Hybrid 
keys. Next one is upright bass. Let's call this bass. And maybe let's add one more. Let's go for a lo-fi glow, another, another play series instrument. We'll see in a second how we change the MIDI channels. But right now that's going out to the right spot. Let's call that lo-fi. So now let's go look at what's happening in contact. So if I click on the first track right here, we should see that this is going to Analog Dreams. Perfect. And I click on the next track and it should be going to Hybrid Keys. And it is. We can see the audio output. We go to the next one. We're going to our bass. All of our MIDI tracks now are outputting to the proper spot in contact. And that's kind of automatic. If you have some kind of issue with that, all you have to do is go to contact, click this little I button if you can't already see it, click the I button, and there we can see MIDI channel and it's set to A1. If I go to my next one, hit the I button, we see MIDI channel A2 and the next one MIDI channel A3. And if you need to change anything, all you have to do is go into contact, click that little drop down and go to port A and then go to one of these 16 different MIDI channels. That's it. Once we've done that now, all of our MIDI tracks over here are gonna automatically go to the right spot in that contact instrument. And so we can now have 16 different patches loaded up in one instance of contact as opposed to 16 separate instances of contact for all of those 16 different instruments. So, so here's the problem with all of that. Now, you'll notice your mixer looks a little bit strange. You have these MIDI faders that have now popped up for your MIDI tracks and it's kind of confusing. This is where you're gonna have your MIDI information. So if I were to record something, it would show up on this MIDI track. So there's my MIDI information. That MIDI information is going out to Contact Master Channel 2. That's it. So we work with our MIDI information the same way we would with an instrument track. But now let's go to my bass track and play something there. Okay, so I've got some bass information happening right here going to the contact instrument at the same time. But the problem is the audio for both of these or for all 16, if I did 16, is coming out of this contact master at the same time. So all of the sound right here on one fader. What you might want to do is you might want to have individual control over the bass, over that hybrid key synthesizer. You might want to put different effects on each of those different instruments. So that's where we need to go configure the outputs. You could stop right here if you wanted to and just use the MIDI faders to control things like level and pan, but you wouldn't be able to control effects and EQ and things like that outside of contact if you don't follow the next steps. So for some of you, maybe that's it. Maybe that's all you need. The weird thing about MIDI tracks in Cubase is they default to this off state for the level and this offset for the panning. So watch what happens. Over in contact, you have a left and right fader right here and a volume fader right here. So this is your panning and this is your volume. So right now it says default off. It looks like it's all the way to the left and you know not making any noise at all. But really what's happening is it's just the MIDI default state. So we can go in here and now start changing this. Watch this slider right here. As I move this analog dreams thing up, you can see it jumps to zero. So it wasn't actually at zero. Of course, we were hearing it up at its default state. And if we crank the volume all the way up in the Cubase mixer, it's gonna go up to its default state in contact. And then the same thing happens with the pan. We're gonna see it as I start moving it, it's gonna jump because now we've moved it from off to zero. So now center, we can see that it's centered up here and then I can pan things this way right here. So you can still use automation and level control with a MIDI fader if you want to, but just know that they default to this off state. So it's kind of strange. Okay, so that's working with MIDI faders. And again, you could stop right there and just work with all of the sound coming out of this contact master. Or you could go to the next step where we actually figure out how to get different outputs out of contact. And this isn't something that contact comes standard with. So I'm gonna show you how to set that up. So first thing we gotta do is go over to our contact master. This is where we need to turn on more outputs. And if we go look over here, we see contact just on this instrument track, we see contact and we can see this little activate outputs button. 
So if I go over there, I can see all of this weird information. We've got auxiliary one, two, three, four, and then we've got a whole bunch of mono outputs. So this is kind of the default state of contact, and it's not super useful. You probably want stereo outputs for every one of your instruments in contact, because most of them are going to be stereo. But we need to figure out a way to have a separate output for analog dreams. We need to have a way to have a separate output for hybrid keys, for operate bass, etc. How do we have multiple outputs, and how do we have it set up this way so that it always shows up that way whenever we open up contact from now on. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this little outputs plus button. We are going to set the quantity to 16 that are two channels each. So stereo for each one. We're going to leave this set to contact stereo one. And then we're going to say ascending output assignment. So one, two, three, four, etc. We're going to delete existing channels before new ones and then make this your default configuration. We're going to hit OK because we don't want just this as our default outputs. We hit OK. It says output configuration was saved as default. Now we have all of these stereo one, two, three, four that show up under the output tab. And by the way, this output tab isn't going to be shown automatically. So in contact, you have to go up to this little button right here and click to make sure that you can see outputs. So now we can see output stereo one is going one and two, stereo two is three and four, stereo three is five and six, and so on and so forth, all the way up to 16th track, which has our 31 and 32 output. So now watch what happens if we go over to Cubase. What we need to do next, we need to close this project. So I'm going to save it and then we need to open it up again. And then hopefully our settings should all be there. So now I go over to my contact track. I click the outputs button and I can see contact master, which is going to be its default state. And now we can see two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 16 stereo pairs that we have ready to work with our different patches. It's just perfect. Now when we go over to the outputs, we can click right there and we can see all of these different outputs available to us. Normally what you do is you go and choose, you know, this output to go channel two or stereo two, this one to go to stereo three and so on and so forth. But watch what we can do down here as well. We can go to this presets batch configuration and then we can go to batch functions and we can go clear output section and create one individual channel for each loaded instrument. Watch what happens when we do that. It says it's going to change things on you. Click yes. Now we can see I've got an analog dreams, a hybrid keys, upright bass, lo-fi glow, the first four available slots. And so now I go back to my contact master and I click this little button and I make sure two, three, four are on. And you'll see in my mixer, I just got a whole bunch of new faders ready to go for each one of these instruments. So now I go over to my analog dreams. I play and I can see that that one is coming out of the contact master because it's coming out of the first channel, which is fine because then I go to hybrid keys and that's coming out of my stereo pair number two. And then I go to my bass and we can see that that one is working. And then I go to lo-fi glow and that one's working as well. So now they all have their own audio faders. We could then click the E button. We could EQ each of those differently. We could put effects on each of them. We could pan them, etc. there. So it's a little bit confusing. And the confusing part is now you have two sets of faders for each instrument in the sense that you've got a MIDI fader and then you've got an audio fader. So what I would probably recommend is that you leave each of these to off, turn them right off. So in other words, never touch the MIDI faders if you're going to set up your different outputs. You set up your outputs this way and then make sure you name them. So then what I would do is go to this little tab right here and I would say, don't show me MIDI channels in the mixer. So now what I have is I have a lo-fi track for all my MIDI information up top. And then I have an audio fader down below to control the level of it, to control the EQ, to control the panning. So that is a ton. That is a, a ton of information on how to set up contact. But the coolest part about it is now you won't have to set it up like that again. You'll always just make your one contact master and then you go choose your instruments and then follow all those steps. OK, how does this work in other instruments? Well, it's actually a lot simpler in other virtual instruments. If I go over to Halion, I'm going to load up the free one that comes with Cubase. I have 16 different slots on Halion Sonic. So of course, those are for the 16 different channels. And so I can go double click on chilled nylon guitar on channel one. And then let's go cheese in orbit on channel two. 
and it's kind of automatically set up, ready to go with Cubase, which kind of makes sense. And on channel one, we can see it's coming on MIDI channel one. So if I click right there, we can change that. And if I click on cheese in orbit, it's on channel two. And then we can see an output right here. So I'm gonna click output two for this one. And this one is on the main output. And then if I had one more, let's go to chime atmosphere and we'll put this one on output three. Instead of using this for my MIDI information, add a new MIDI track, just one, this one's, change that one to channel one. And then I'm gonna add a whole bunch more and they will automatically be in consecutive order. So we can see these are all now going to Halion, channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five. And if for some reason these were on the wrong one, just click right here and make sure it's going to the proper place, Halion Master MIDI. Any information here is going to the chilled nylon guitar. <laughs> And then if I go to the next one, now it's going to cheese in orbit. And then if I go to the next one, it's going to chime atmosphere. Okay, let's get rid of these tracks. And then the output. So we've got these coming out of different outputs and I just have to make sure on my Halion Master that I've activated the proper outputs. But here's the coolest part about this one. Let's load up an organ. And we can see this is going to Sunday, this one is going to the main output. If I choose output four, Look what Cubase does for me. It automatically activates output four. So I hope that was useful. You know, you never know when you might need a multi timbral device and to have some understanding of it is gonna go a long way in the future. So hit the subscribe button and the bell and we'll see you in the next video.